Once a seller accepts an offer to sell their property, the next step is to sign a contract. And on my screen here is the standard form contract that we use in New Jersey. Um, it is sometimes called the Najar contract, the New Jersey Association of Realtors contract. Um, and it's about 13, 14 pages. And I'm gonna review with you right now, linked down below is a sample of the contract if you want to review it. Um, the first page of the contract is sometimes referred to as opinion 26, which basically says uh, it's a notice to buyer and seller and they are to read it before signing. And it says how the buyer's agent represents the buyer. So as a real estate broker, um, the agent for the buyer is going to check off how they're representing. Do they represent the buyer? Do they represent both the buyer and the seller? Neither the buyer and the seller. Um, so that is disclosed here. And then points two to seven basically say that real estate agents are not attorneys. And if you need any legal advice, you should consult with a lawyer. So the buyer and the seller will both sign this form. Uh, as well as their agent. So the selling agent, as well as the uh, agent for the seller, uh, listing agent will sign the form as well. And then it will also say who prepared the document. So this page will be signed uh, by both buyer and seller and their respective realtors. The next page is really the start of the contract. Um, and basically it says here at the top, this is a legally binding contract that will become final within three business days. During this period, you may choose to consult an attorney who can review and cancel the contract. See attorney review section for details. This legally binding attorney review three-day period does not start until the contract has been fully executed by both buyer and seller, and the contract has been delivered to both buyer and seller. So that's when the clock starts ticking on the attorney review period. The first thing, um, when once a contract signed, if the contract will be sent to both buyer and seller's attorney. And the first thing that usually the buyer's attorney will do is disapprove the contract in its current state, and they will formally extend the attorney review period. I've had attorney review periods that last a day. I've had them take three days. I've had them take a week. But this three-day period, if no one consulted with a lawyer and the contract was fully executed, after three business days, it would become binding. But because everyone consults with an attorney, the review period is extended. Um, I'm going to review the basics of this contract. Um, a lot of this is uh, uh, standard language that is already set forth in the in the contract. Um, this entire contract is subject to attorney review. So during the attorney review period, the attorneys will draft an addendum to the contract, basically changing language, adding rights, take adding language that they like, striking language that they may not like in the contract. Once there is agreement over this contract and those addendums, then the attorney review period concludes and the contract becomes binding. But it's not binding up until the up until the conclusion of attorney review. So by signing a contract no one is bound to the property. They're only bound to the property and bound to the contract after the review period concludes. Um, starting here, the parties to the contract are on line 18. So the buyers that agree to purchase from the sellers, line 26, whose address is sometimes the address they live in may not be the property that's for sale. Um, the property that's being sold is on line 36 in which town it's in, which county it's in. Line 40 is the lot and block number on the tax map. Um, that is uh, how the city that the property is located in legally says this is where the property is located. Qualifier is if it's a condominium, that's where the unit number would go. Um, line 43 to 48 have to do with the purchase price. So line 43 would be the purchase price. Uh, line 46 would be the deposit. 47 would be the mortgage amount if there's if there's a mortgage being um, uh, obtained. Um, line 48 would be the balance of the purchase price. So let's say for argument's sake, it's a $500,000 uh, sales price and the buyer is putting down 20% down payment. The down payments get split up. Usually it's 10% upfront on the contract. So after the attorney review period, the buyer would furnish the 10% and then at closing, they would bring their, the balance of the deposit which would be uh, the remaining 10%. And then the bank brings the mortgage and then the, they already have that 10% initially in escrow. So you'll have the 10% deposit after review, 
the 10% deposit due a closing, and then the balance of the, mor or the mortgage amount, which would be 80% of the purchase price, would be brought by the bank at closing for a total of 500000 So this talks about how the money is broken up. Um, second page talks about how the deposit is held, who's holding it, when is it due. Um, usually it's held by the seller's attorney, but I've seen it be held by other parties as well, including the title company. Um, so that's all outlined here. If the buyer is obtaining a mortgage, how much is the uh, mortgage for? What kind of loan? The term of the loan? Um, and basically, if there is a loan being pursued, uh, the buyer usually has 30 days from the conclusion of attorney review to obtain a fully committed loan, meaning they applied for it. It's gone through underwriting. The bank has ordered an appraisal. Um, so they have about a month to obtain a loan commitment where they formally apply. Um, and then line 94 is the closing date. What's the targeted closing date for the uh, property? The closing date could change during attorney review, but this is the date that everyone's moving towards the, the targeted closing date. The closing date formally needs to be scheduled by the buyer's attorney, the seller's attorney, the lender, and the title company. So um, it is a target date. I always tell people the date may flex a little bit, but it is the date that everyone's moving towards on the contract. Um, lines 108 to 123 basically have to do with what's included in the sale specifically and what's excluded from the sale. If there's anything specifically included like the appliances or a light fixture or personal property or furniture, that would be outlined here. If there's something excluded on line 119, say the seller is not, they're excluding um, a certain appliance or a light fixture, that would be listed here. Um, other items here, um, let me see here. Uh, line 186 has to do with what kind of property is this? Is this a one-family home? Is this a condominium? Two-family home? That's outlined here. Um, are there tenants living in the property? Is the property being sold with tenants? So if it's an investment property and, and the buyer is buying it with tenants living there, that would be applicable. Who are the tenants? What's the rent? Uh, what is the term of the lease? So we have the basic information on the lease regarding that. If there is no tenant and it's the owner lives there and it's being delivered vacant at closing, it would be not applicable. Um, it's line 215 have to do with lead paint disclosure. I'm talking about this in, a, in another video in this series, but if the property is built before 1978, a lead paint disclosure form is required to be completed by the seller. Is that applicable or not applicable? Um, lines 231, this all has to do with home inspections. Um, and basically the buyer has, according to the contract, um, let me see here, they have 10 days from the conclusion of attorney of you to, do a, to perform a home inspection. I'm sorry, 14 days. So they have 14 days from the conclusion of attorney of you to conduct a home inspection unless it is otherwise negotiated or changed as part of the offer. So if this is if this date is if, if there's nothing here it's 14 days, but if the, if it was say uh, the buyer made said I'll do inspections within 7 days, that would be put here. Um just so you're aware, line 367 in New Jersey, the buyer acknowledges that all properties are sold in as is condition. They're buying the property assuming uh in as is condition. They're if they're performing a home inspection, um they are assuming that everything in the property, appliances, mechanicals, is working. They can, as part of their home inspection, if they uncover items that they weren't aware of, things that are broken, things that need repair, they can make those requests as part of the home inspection request unless the inspection was waived. Um, if they make the request, a seller is not obligated to do any repairs or credits. I Many sellers do work with buyers on issuing credits or repairs for certain items. However, uh, it's not required. As I said here on line 367, all properties are sold in as is condition. Um, but a buyer, if they did not waive the home inspection and they're not satisfied with the home inspection results, can terminate the contract as a result. So if they see something, they're like, wow, I didn't know there's a major problem here. And I always tell buyers the point of an inspection is to look for major catastrophic problems or issues that we were not aware of um, that were not disclosed or the when they came to the property um, were not seen. Um, cosmetic issues are rarely addressed. Um, but I do see some sellers, even though it is as is, they are willing to work with some people on some items um, to make everyone comfortable to move towards the, uh, the, the closing of the transaction. 
Um, flood risk, this has to do with the flood disclosure. Um, uh, anything regarding flood hazards uh, has to be disclosed. Let me see here. Um, line 591 has to do with um, the, the agents involved in the transaction and how are they representing. So who are the agents? Which company are they with? Are they acting as a seller's agent, a dual agent, a buyer's agent? If there's more than one company involved, how are they representing? Um, line 605, this has to do with the brokers involved and the commission being paid. What is the total commission? Is it coming from the buyer or the seller? Um, who's paying the commission? If it's on the, the participating broker, meaning the agent, the agent representing the buyer, um, is the fee being paid by the seller or is it being paid by the buyer? So that's all outlined here. If, if one of the parties purchasing, either selling the property, the seller or the buyer, if they're a real estate agent, have a real estate license that has to be disclosed um, and that will be in the contract. Um, and then finally, additional contractual provisions. If there's anything specific that was added to the offer, is the buyer waiving the mortgage contingency? Are they waiving part of the home inspection contingency or a certain dollar amount of the home inspection contingency? So in a competitive market, I've seen buyers say, uh, I'm completely waiving the mortgage, the home inspection contingency, or I'm waiving, uh, I'm not going to bother the seller with minor items. Um, it, it basically, all items uh, under $4,000 or a certain dollar amount will not be requested. But if it's uh, major mechanicals or appliances, I'm going to request, um, I, I'll leave that open. Um, so that language is all put here. And then it would be signed by the buyer, signed by the seller, and witnessed. And the bottom of each page is signed as well. And then once it's fully executed, it will then be sent to the attorneys to start the attorney review period. As I mentioned earlier, the contract does not become binding until either if no one can sell to an attorney and three business days pass, it becomes binding. I've never seen that happen in 23 years of selling real estate. Um, however, it will then go to the lawyers and the first thing they'll do is disapprove the contract and extend attorney review until everyone is comfortable with the language in this contract and the addendums that were drafted by the lawyers. Um, if you have any further questions, you can reach out to me anytime at Walter at living on the Hudson.com or at 347-448-3766. Have a great day.